It was a joyous and hopeful day. The pride and song of 250,000 people, African Americans and Caucasians alike, rang out through Washington, D.C. There, as a culmination of all the injustices and tragedies African Americans worked to triumph over, Martin Luther King Jr. proclaimed, I have a dream. However, the day that the protest was held on, August 28, 1963, was no coincidence. It had been only eight years before, on that same day, a 14-year-old African-American boy also had a dream. But in a tragic act of hatred and racism, his future was snuffed out like a flame, slain and dumped in a river, his face and body butchered, an unbearable sight. That boy was Emmett Till. Since the late 1800s, Jim Crow laws prevented integration. They segregated water fountains, restrooms, restaurants, and other establishments essential for daily life. Named after a character from an offensive minstrel show, Jim Crow laws forced African Americans to use facilities that were of poorer quality than those reserved for their white counterparts, and essentially reinforced the idea that white people were superior. In addition, these laws set in place societal norms that, if broken, resulted in dire consequences for African Americans. For simply being registered to vote, for looking at a white woman the wrong way, or by offending any white person in the slightest, African American men, women, and children would be brutally tortured and hung. This awful form of punishment, this gruesome abuse, was known as lynching. Despite this, Emmett Till still enjoyed being in the center of attention, often described to be witty and humorous. Although Till had experienced racism, he hadn't the slightest idea of how dangerous his unruly behavior could be in the South. On August 23, 1955, Till traveled to Money, Mississippi to visit his relatives. Three days after his arrival, Till and his cousins drove down to Bryant's Grocery and Meat Market. There was a span of time where Till was left all alone with the white shopkeeper, Carolyn Bryant. Although they were left all alone for about a minute, what happened in the shop is shrouded in mystery. As Till and Wright left, Bryant ran to her car to get her pistol. Imitating the wolf from the 1940s cartoon Red Hot Riding Hood, Till wolf whistled at Bryant. Though he did not understand how grave the action was, he saw the horror in his cousin's faces. Terrified, they jumped into their car and sped off. From Simeon, he said bye to her one time and bye to her the second time. That's when she felt, I guess, intimidated. On August 27th, 2.30 a.m., Preacher, preacher, a man called to Moe's right. It was Roy Bryant, the shopkeeper's husband, and J.W. Milam, the half-brother of Roy Bryant. They had caught wind of what had transpired. They had come for the boy who had done all the talk. The men drove to the barn of Milam's brother, Leslie, in Sunflower County, and as the boy cried for his mother, Emmett Till was whipped, kicked at, and beaten an inch away from death. He was taken to the Tallahatchie River and finally, at the young age of 14, his life abruptly ended. Burdened by a 74-pound gin fan with barbed wire around his neck, his bare body was drenched in the Tallahatchie River, deteriorating. He was left unrecognizable, and his late father's ring was the only clue as to whom the mutilated body belonged to, the body of Emmett Till. His tongue was choked out of his mouth, his eye lay on his cheek, and the bridge of his nose was shattered, and a bullet hole ran from one end of his head to the other. This sight was almost too much for Till's mother to bear. Oh God, oh God, my only boy. Despite the tragedy that she saw before her, Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley knew she could not back down and she must triumph over the murderers of her only son. She had to let the whole nation, the whole world know. Mrs. Till Mobley decided on an open casket funeral for Emmett. Let the world see what I've seen. Mrs. Till Mobley's suffering was not lost in vain.
during that time, I know for our family, it was definitely a horrific uh, act that happened and definitely a sad time for all of us. Because it brought a lot of pain, a lot of stress. It was horrific with the tragedy that the pain had brought to our family. There was a lot of shock, a lot of disbelief, a lot of fear, and a lot of grief, a lot of screaming and yelling in the house. On September 6th, 1955, Tens of thousands of people from all over the world made the pilgrimage past Emmett's open casket, some fainting, others going hysterical at the sight of the mutilated young boy. Following the funeral, down in Mississippi, Milam and Bryant had been charged with the murder of Emmett Till. On September 19th, the trial against the two men commenced. In the beginning, it seemed as if Mrs. Till Mobley had a chance at triumphing over the prejudice that was in the courtroom. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, brought in local surprise witnesses, such as Willie Reed, to testify for Till. And long before the trial began, Mose Wright knew he would be there. He would stop at nothing. He would risk his life in hopes of bringing justice to his great nephew. When he was asked to identify the murderers, Mose Wright stood up before a sea of white people and pointed out the two murderers with his index finger and exclaimed, There he is. However, this trial would soon prove to be yet another tragedy inflicted on Mrs. Till Mobley. The jury was an all-white and all-male. There were almost no African-American witnesses. Carolyn Bryant had testified that Till had made lewd acts toward her, yet 52 years later, she recalled that she had lied. Nothing that boy did could ever justify what happened to him. John C. Witten, an attorney, told the judges, Your fathers will turn over in their graves if Milam and Bryant are found guilty, and I'm sure that every last Anglo-Saxon one of you has the courage to free these men in the face of that pressure. The all-white jury, who had met for less than 45 minutes, argued that it cannot be proven whom the body belonged to, as it was so deteriorated. J.W. Milam and Roy Bryant were acquitted. African-American newspapers Notably, the Chicago Defender and Jet Magazine extensively covered Till's open casket funeral and mass-printed pictures of the child's battered face. The harrowing lynching of Emmett Till became national and even worldwide news, appearing on the front page of every African-American newspaper. The nation was shaken to its core, the gruesome truth of racism once again unearthed. But this tragedy soon blossomed into a triumph. The youth became inspired, yet furious. They vowed to do something about racism, many of them growing up to become prominent figures in the fight for civil rights. This generation, the Emmett Till generation, were all destined from the very beginning to lead the country in sit-ins, freedom rides, and ultimately in the creation of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC. As the younger generation fueled the drive behind the movement itself, Already established civil rights leaders used Till as a symbol of the centuries of tragedy and mistreatment people of color had to face. However, Till's impact could be felt just months after his lynching. December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks was told to move to the back of the bus so that a white man could sit. Something inside Rosa Parks told her to stand her ground. I thought of Emmett Till, and when the bus driver ordered me to move to the back, I just couldn't move. Not for the murder of Emmett Till, you would have never had the civil rights movement. Not at the capacity that we, you know, we've come to know it to be. Yes, a movement may have existed, but you wouldn't have had Rosa Parks or Dr. King. Their actions and decisions that were made was made because of the murder of Emmett Till. The Afro-American magazines had proved to reach far and wide, sharing the tragedy of Emmett Till, shaping and molding the future of the country. Emmett Till never had the chance to dream, but amid the tragedy of his lynching, Till's legacy galvanized the nation to rise up and to stand unwavering before the violent segregationists. Till's legacy galvanized African Americans to fight for civil rights. It galvanized those who had labored over the soil of this land for centuries to rise up and triumph over hatred, bigotry, and racism. Emmett Till, a story of blood, injustice, and impact.